What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back again with another video. So, I'm gonna check out WWE promos that got real fast. Now, sometimes uh, you're in a segment with someone and there's some real tension between you and this individual, but you're in the business of making money and there are situations where someone says something or they do do something that obviously y'all didn't plan to do or wasn't part of the script and then things kind of get a little serious like you know tensions may start to arise and you know you know it can end up in some you know situations where a brawl may ensue afterwards you know so it just happens you know everybody's trying to make the most money be at the top and you know egos get involved and tensions start flaring and some people start airing stuff out on live television that shouldn't be aired out so we're gonna check out some of those instances where you know wwe promo segments got a little too real um and it may have caused some issues in the back so we're gonna check this out should be a good one let's get right into it man 10 WWE promos that got real fast. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos and follow us on Facebook for exclusive leads. Number 10, Jeff Jarrett angers Stone Cold Steve Austin. When Jeff Jarrett returned to WWE in 1997, I don't know if I've he heard about this one. With WWE's resident top star Stone Cold Steve Austin. To plant the seeds for this eventual feud, WWE had Jarrett cut a short promo directed towards Austin on Raw, where he declared. Now here's a guy who's lowered himself to shaving his head and coming out here every week, not once or twice, but 10 or 15 times and saying the word ass. That's right, saying the word ass just to get a reaction, just to get noticed. Oh, whoa. Old, you will always be the ringmaster. And as far as your blasphemous merchandise, that offends me. Austin oh. 316 offends me because what you're doing is ripping off the Bible to put money in your pockets. Oh. His comments enraged Austin, who had zero idea what Jarrett was going to say. Austin would immediately confront Jarrett and Austin was so annoyed that he ordered Vince Russo to never directly book him in a match against Jarrett ever in the promotion. Damn, I, I never knew that. I never knew. Damn, he just said, fuck it, I'm going to bury this guy live. Damn, that's wild. Bill Heyman buries Vince McMahon to his face. We know about this Bill one. Bill Heyman has had so many memorable promos throughout his career, yet one promo in 2001 was completely unscripted, and Heyman pushed boundaries with a groundbreaking promo. Heyman cut a promo on former WWE chairman Vince McMahon leading up to the Survivor Series event in 2001, and McMahon didn't give Heyman any direct instructions other than to draw him money. Heyman's shoot mm -hmm. promo contains such lines as Your father shook the hand of every promoter in this country and swore to them that he'd never compete against them, that his son would never compete against them. And when your father died, you competed. And with your ruthless, merciless, take no prisoners attitude, you drove everybody out of the business, didn't you, Vince? You ran all the competition to the ground and stole all their ideas, and you made yourself a billionaire out of it. You know whose idea you stole the most, Vince? You stole mine. Speaking about the iconic mm -hmm. shoot promo and appearance with Inside the Ropes, the WWE Hall of Famer stated, To his credit, I'll give him a ton of credit. I went up to Vince halfway through the day and said, Do you even know some of the shots I'm going to say to you? And he goes, Nope, draw me money. Yep. Okay, are you going to say anything back to me? Nope, just draw, draw me money. money. Number eight. That's all he cared about, bro. Vince was, he was the type of person, All right, say whatever you want to say to me. I don't give a shit. Just draw me money. Stay within the guidelines of the network. Draw me money. I don't care. Like in that uh that interview that he uh we actually checked out on the channel. Paul kept asking, "Are you sure? Is it gonna draw me money? Oh, it's gonna draw you money, Vince. Then all right, draw me money. I don't care. One of the most iconic promo promos of all time, unscripted as you can tell. Page goes too far." Charlotte Flair's brother Reed passed away. In I remember this one too. And just two years later, WWE decided to use the tragic passing in a storyline. Yeah. On the November 16th, 2015 edition of Raw. This was kind of wild. Took place between Charlotte Flair and Paige, and during the segment, Charlotte would state that she was going to pay tribute to Reed in the upcoming pay-per-view match. 
and virtually out of nowhere, Paige declared, your little baby brother. He didn't have much fight in him, did he? That was His cold. Immediate backlash. Oh was my God, that was cold. It was rumored online that WWE had asked the Flair family for permission to use Reed's name in this manner. The insensitive comment led to no surge in interest in the storyline. It just turned people away from the storyline completely. Yeah. We offended the Flair family in attempts to generate buzz in a story, and it backfired, rightly so. Number seven, Ric Flair changes everything. In 2004, Ric Flair cut a promo that was so wild that it forced Vince McMahon to become more hands on with promos. Uh. Flair was cutting a promo on Randy Orton that was supposed to promote their upcoming pay per view match. However, Flair went completely off the rails and began to talk about his real life experiences with virgins. Quite rightly, McMahon was in half. That sounds about. That sounds about Flair. <laughs> that sounds so much like him. He was probably lit. He, that sounds about right. Happy, and this was the turning point for McMahon, and this is where his micromanagement style was born. Speaking on ad-free shows, former head writer for WWE Brian Gerwitz discussed the infamous promo. There might have been an incident in Madison Square Garden once when Ric Flair went off script that Vince got a little heated about what he said and said, damn it, from then on, I need to know what every single talent is going to be saying going out there. That was in Madison Square Garden with lots of corporate sponsors. And when he said that he has made virgins bleed, there was a noticeable <laughs> shift in the amount of... That was... That's fucking wild, bro. That's wild for back then. That's cancelable. Like, that's that will get you cancelled now. But back then, that was even wild to say. Holy... Process grown from that point. Number six, Sunny Days. It's well documented that Bret Hart and Shawn Michaels weren't exactly the best of friends in the 90s and in 1997, HBK took things a step too far. During a promo battle between the two on Raw, HBK made a reference to Hart's sex life before stating that Hart had been seeing a lot of sunny days recently. Ah, uh, that's cold, that bro. And were having an affair. That's Hart cold. Hart was livid with HBK, and Hart would later confront him backstage, which seemed like a common theme during the Oh, yeah, no, they hated each other, so it made sense. <laughs> that's literally kind of a low... That's a, that's a messed up move. You out here damn near snitching, basically. Dry snitching, bro. To the world. Like, that's kind of fucked up, bro. time. Whilst WWE were prone to pushing the boundaries during this era, there were lines that talent shouldn't cross, and this was definitely the case here. Number 5. Pipe Bomb Of course. The CM Punk changed the wrestling landscape when he cut the Pipe Bomb promo in 2011. The promo became a staple of the pro wrestling industry and has drastically altered the way pro wrestlers cut promos over the past 13 years. There were a ton of urban legends surrounding the promo, some believe that the promo was unscripted, while some believe that Vince McMahon would never allow Punk to cut a promo of this nature without knowing the content ahead of time. Well, the truth is that, according to Punk at least, he gave McMahon an outline and Punk proceeded to ignore everything that was approved on this outline. <laughs> uh -huh. Paul Heyman, Brock Lesnar, Triple H, Stephanie McMahon, and uh -huh. McMahon dying. Whilst the content of this promo was controversial and extremely real, it, it was worked. the exact promo that WWE needed at the time, as it led to a mass surge in interest in their product. Number four. Brought me back to WWE, so clearly, even though I'm sure Vince didn't approve a lot of it, I'm glad CM Punk said what he said, because that was a turning point for a lot of fans. Like, oh, I got to see what the product's doing now. Xavier Woods is livid. Even though the WWE draft is one of the most exciting nights of the year for fans, the same can't be said for the talent. Friends are often separated and the WWE has been prone to splitting up established tag teams. Mm -hmm. During the 2019 Superstar Shakeup, Xavier Woods was frustrated that several of the names that were key parts of his Up Up Down Down YouTube channel were moved to the opposite show. This made working on the channel extremely difficult and the next time Woods appeared on TV, he began to shoot on the outcome of the shakeup during his promo. Honestly, on top of that, with all this superstar shakeup nonsense, Raw took like 80% of the up, up, down, down roster. And what am I supposed to do? I'm trying to make a successful YouTube channel. They're taking everybody from me. And honestly, <laughs> if I don't see Tyler Breeze on SmackDown by the end of the show, I would lose my mind. <laughs> Number three, John Cena goes low. But due to their star power, uh, WWE gave John Cena and The Rock a ton of leeway in terms of their promo work in duh. 2012. <laughs> of the course they were. It was one of the biggest matches in pro wrestling history, so it was vital that the feud felt real and organic. This was good. During the feud ditched a lot of the PG elements of his character. So good. It reminded the entire world just how good he was on the mic. During a promo exchange between the two, it was apparent that The Rock had notes written on his wrist and mm -hmm. Cena decided to do the unthinkable. Cena came to the ring and outright called The Rock out for having his promo written on his wrist. I don't need words like respect and loyalty to trend worldwide. 
Just like I don't need my notes for my promo on my wrist. <laughs> this According to cold, Smith, this bro. wasn't initially in his promo plans. However, a certain name backstage tipped him off regarding The Rock's wrist. And at the time, Cena believed he was fully justified in calling the great one out. Number two, Roman Reigns bro, finally... And that shit was... It, it, it worked, bro. It, in a sense of... He really held his own. Outside of people's bias, he held his own. Like, this is The Rock, the great one. Well, he, why does he need promos on his wrist? Like, that's... It worked. It worked, man. Claps back. During Roman Reigns' rather unsurprising run as a babyface, the crowd often mm. gave him a tough time. And due to him being the top babyface in the company, they booked him to just ignore the negative response. Of course. However, in 2016, Reigns snapped on the crowd in an unscripted uh -huh. real-life moment that I think I remember a this. to his heel persona that would come just four years later. This took place during a promo segment between Reigns and Dean Ambrose, and uh -huh. when the fans began to chant that Reigns couldn't wrestle, it clearly hit a nerve. As yep. Reigns clapped back by saying, for all the dudes chanting that I can't wrestle, calm, calm down, down, relax, relax take, take a, a sip, sip of your, your beer, beer, and, and shut, shut your mouth. mouth. And number one, tell him... So good, bro. So damn good. We didn't even know that was really him coming out. Like, that was him. Like that's what you would that's what the tribal chief version of Roman Reigns would say. Crowd's booing him. He's like, hey, sit down, shut up. Y'all here to watch me. This is what we wanted. And we we was just glimpses of it. And we finally got it. And now when he comes back, he's gonna be the biggest baby face we've seen in potentially in a long time, bro. Outside of Cody, he bought he may be I think he's probably gonna be the the biggest baby face in the company easily easily everyone who chose you now, the work between cm punk and drew mcintyre uh, has been incredible on tv so good consistently gone so in good used to hold anything back. love this view particular raw during the road to wrestlemania 40 mcintyre was talking about his time as the chosen one uh -huh. punk responded in a clearly unscripted yep. remark by mm -hmm. saying tell everyone right. who, chose who chose you, you. say his name, name. you have the balls <laughs> Due to there being a blanket <laughs> yep. of mentioning that man on TV, Punk knew he had put McIntyre in a difficult position. McIntyre handled it well as he just smirked and moved on. This was one yep. of the first times that McMahon had been indirectly mentioned on TV. That was a good was one. blacklisted from the company. And instances of this nature are going to be less frequent as years go on. But they have it and Drew handled that really well. <laughs> it's not PG, Punk. <laughs> he handled it really well because that was a cold line. Say, tell everyone who chose you. Say his name if you don't, if you got the ball. Say his name. This is so good, so damn good. Love the feud. This was a good one, good list. I'm sure there's plenty other situations where you know promo segments definitely got a little heated, and you can tell there's some unscriptedness going on here. So comment down below. Let me know your favorite unscripted promo segment of all time in whatever company it could be WWE, AEW, TNA doesn't matter let me know your favorite unscripted promo of all time appreciate all love and support road to 150k appreciate y'all kicking with me see you next one peace